Hello and welcome back to another video. <laughs> Today's topic is, should you swim every day? Whoa, okay. <laughs> Can you swim every day? Yes. But should you swim every day? No! <laughs> and you're probably wondering, why? 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 Why can't I? Why shouldn't I swim every day, Justin? Well, I'm going to explain to you in this video why you should not swim every day. By the way, if you're new to this channel, subscribe and like this video. And uh, let's hear what Justin has to say, okay? Here's the thing about swimming that a lot of people don't know. A lot of people that come to me asking for my help, learning how to swim, learning, getting swimming lessons from me, getting some coaching from me done. Guess what? These are all former runners, former athletes, former soccer players, former football players, form, former dry land sport activity people. They go visit their doctors and the doctor says, you've been doing X amount of years doing this sport and look what it's done to your body. It's ruined your joints, your bones. If you keep this up, you're gonna be in a wheelchair in the next few years, so you better stop or switch to an alternative sport. And guess what that alternative sport becomes? Swimming! Nine times out of 10, most of these dry land activities are gonna just ruin your body. And when you get to a point where your body can't take it anymore, when you're getting really old, you're all gonna be ending up in the water. I guarantee you, all these students that I have, they, they've, all, they've all wrecked their bodies and then they're finally learning how to swim at the age of 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, later on in their life, which is fine. Anybody can learn how to swim. You don't have to be like a toddler. That's not the problem. Can you swim every day? Yes. One main advantage of swimming is that your joints will not ache after a swim session. Your muscles will not be sore after a swim session. Why? Because you're working with the water. Whenever you're doing anything dry land, whether it's like lifting weights, running on the pavement, or playing soccer with a group of friends, you're working against something. And that something is usually the floor, usually something where your joints, and your, your limbs, your feet, or your arms has to have some sort of shock involved, impact. You won't feel it every time you step on concrete, every time you run, one foot in front of the other. By the way, I am a runner. I understand your world. I've done so many other dry land activities as well. But the one thing that separates swimming from all of these dry land activities is the lack of impact. There is no shock when it comes to working with the water. You're working with the water. You're not working against the water. When you're working against the water, that's when you start drowning. But should you swim every day? Now that question is a lot deeper and this is a lot more important in my opinion because I don't think anyone should swim every day and here's why. The problem with swimming and you're probably swimming in a swimming pool if you're going to do this every day is that you're exposing yourself to chemicals and the chemicals that I'm talking about is chlorine. Chlorine you will not feel it if you swim like once a year but if you swim every day for the rest of your life your body's gonna feel the effects. Chlorine, whether you like it or not, attaches onto your skin, you inhale it, it ruins your hair, it's, it does so much damage to your body. And you ingest small amounts, whether you blow your bubbles or not, you will ingest tiny amounts of chlorine every time you swim. Even if you are a good swimmer, you know how to control the air, your breathing technique is fine you will still ingest small amounts of chlorine after every session. The fact that you are exposing yourself to these chemicals on a daily basis is dangerous. So this is why I would say no, you should not swim every day. Another problem with swimming every day is that you got to deal with traffic. I like comparing swimming to driving because when you first learn how to drive, just like how you first learn how to swim, it's exciting, right? You're learning a new skill and once it starts working, with you, right? You learn how to drive, you, 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 get, you gain confidence, just like swimming. You learn front crawl, you learn your breathing. You swim from one end to the, the other end of a pool. You, you get excited, because like, wow, I, I can do this with my body, and wow, I accomplished this feat. Let's, let's go further, 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 further. Let's, let's, go, let's do more, just like driving, right? You get excited, and you want to take the car out every day. You want to go to the pool every day, and you just want to just refine your skills, get better at it. I know that feeling. I was like that too. When I first learned how to do front crawl, I was so excited. I can do one lap, 
boom, boom, I want to do two laps, and then three laps the next day, and then four laps the next day, right? When I finally got butterfly, which took a long ass time, did one lap and then two laps, I just want to keep going further and further with this technique that I finally got. I get it. Driving is exciting in the beginning. But if you've been driving for so many years, you understand that driving every day is hell. It's stressful. Why? Because you got to deal with traffic. You got to learn to deal with other people. It's not driving alone. That's the problem. Anybody can drive on an abandoned highway, no problem. And that's what you see in all these luxury car commercials. But the reality is we are driving with other people and other people 99% of the times don't know what they're doing and they're making your life stressful. They're cutting you off. They're tailgating you. They're doing all sorts of illegal stuff that they shouldn't be doing. Or they're not following the rules. Same thing applies to swimming. When you're lap swimming, you're dealing with all kinds of swimmers, different like realities in their heads. And most of the time they're going to drive you nuts. Lots of swimmers that I, I have to swim with and I have to share a lane with. Most of the times it's, it's very stressful for me and it really puts me off swimming when I have to deal with these idiots on a daily basis. I'm talking about people that tailgate you. I'm talking about people that, that don't take a shower before they enter the pool. They're disgusting. People that spit in the water. They, they, they consciously spit in the water because they think the chlorine will eat it all up. People that just don't know what they're doing. They're just they're in the wrong lane. They've gotten into so many fights. And it's just like driving. You deal with all kinds of people that you just cannot stand. And that just, that gets to you over time. Plus the combination of chlorine exposure on top of that. Yeah, it's a dangerous recipe. If you don't believe me, I want you to Take a look or observe competitive swimmers. What do they do? They compete, right? Obviously they compete. So they do this full time. They, they spend like two sessions a day at the pool, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. That's how hard they train. And they do this five to six times a week. So they're, they're doing double, triple, quadruple the amount of chlorine exposure and people exposure than you are. If you're swimming like once a week, what do you notice about competitive swimmers or what do I notice about competitive swimmers? They're very bitter people. <laughs> Just like a driver that drives every day dealing with traffic, a competitive swimmer is not a happy person most of the time. First of all, they got to get up really early in the morning. If you're a kid and you're a competitive swimmer, you got to get up 5 a.m. in the morning, five times a week. You're not going to be very happy. <laughs> you got to swim two times a day, twice a day. And they're exposed to that chlorine and their hair is damaged, their skin is itchy, their eyes are watering, and they probably have developing asthma problems due to the chlorine exposure. And then they got to deal with other people. And on top of that, they got to compete. So they're swimming in a team, but in their mind, just like their coach installs, they have to be number one. They have to beat everybody in the pool. And that's just more stress on top of stress. Do you see the effect? So, I have never met a happy competitive swimmer through, throughout my career. Most competitive swimmers are bitter, they're jaded, they're kind of disgruntled. And I feel for them. I mean, if I had that kind of life, I would be disgruntled as well. A lot of people look up to competitive swimmers, they see them standing on the podium holding a gold medal. Me, I look, I see the opposite. I say like how much sacrifice and stress was involved in order to get to that, that, that place where they are. Should you swim every day? No, you should not. What I do recommend is that you balance swimming with dry land activities. And I said this previous in my previous videos, you should balance swimming with running. What do you do when you run? You are free to go anywhere you want. There's no one tailgating you. You're not competing with other people and do not try to substitute running with treadmills. Okay. Treadmills, you're stuck in this virtual running simulation on each side. There are other runners besides you that they, that gets annoying. You gotta find a place that has one of these treadmills or you gotta buy one of the expensive treadmills and there is no adaptation when it comes to using a treadmill. I mean, it's just a flat floor you control and you, your, your mind just turns off or my mind just shuts off when I'm on a treadmill because there's nothing to adapt to. Whereas if I'm running outside, I got to adapt to the pavement. I got to adapt to the conditions. There might be somebody 
coming towards me that I have to swerve around or I have to adapt to the wind, the, the rain, the weather conditions, all of that. That's exciting. Plus, the scenery keeps changing as I run further and further. Running, yes. It's a pain in the ass. Your joints and muscles will ache. Just like my joints and my muscles ache after every run. No doubt. But once you get over that hump, just like swimming has a hump of itself. Yes, running has a lot of benefits. For example, you can get cut, you, you can you develop your cardio, your stamina just shoots out from, from the roof, you can do more laps. So one helps the other. Running helps swimming and swimming helps running in the end. What I recommend is you should do an, a balanced approach when it comes to both of these. You swim on Monday, you run on Tuesday. You swim on Wednesday, and then you run on Thursday, and then you take Friday, Saturday, Sunday off. You, take, you need to take that time off. If you are a beginner, yes, you can spend more time in the water because you're learning the ABCs. And when you learn the ABCs, what are you doing? You're learning how to control your breathing. And that doesn't take a lot of toll on your body, like physically wise, right? So spending like three to four sessions a week as a beginner in the pool, just learning how to blow bubbles, learning how to float or glide or move your arms. Yes, that's good. You can do that. Later on, later on, once you get into lap swimming mode, when you're going back and forth and you're sharing a lane, a tiny little lane with all these idiots that don't know what they're doing, it's going to get to you. It's going to aggravate you like it does to me. And I get easily aggravated when I'm swimming because most people just don't follow the rules. The rules are just plastered right on the side of the wall for everyone to see. This, these are the pool rules. Don't spit, take a thorough shower, know which lane you're swimming in, blah, 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 blah. But they don't follow the rules. They don't. Just like driving, you're, gonna, you're going to be dealing with a lot of people that are going to piss you off. So to lower your stress levels, consider saying two to three times a week, max. Lap swimming wise, lap swimming wise. Balance it out with dry land activities, whether it be running, soccer, weightlifting, whatever it is that you do. But for cardio wise, running is the best option in my opinion. Don't do cycling, okay? I don't like cycling. Cycling, the bicycle does all the work for you in my opinion, okay? And I know this because I run alongside cyclists. I cycle and I just don't feel the effects compared to running. Stick with running and swimming for your cardio. If you really want to learn how to swim, sign up for my online course, 7dayswim.co. Click the link down below. Thousands of students have enrolled in this course and they learned how to swim from, me, from yours truly. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. And if you don't have any money, then you can join our private Facebook group for free and we can help you out for free. All you have to do is click the link down below, ask questions, you can post your videos of yourself swimming for feedback and I, I'm there actively helping out people for free. So you've got all the tools that you need under your belt. All you have to do is turn off your computer, get in the water, start doing the work. Okay. So thanks for watching. Subscribe to this YouTube channel, like this video, click that bell, bing, and I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye.